Oh, that shit was crazy, dog. Crazy. Okay, here goes. I've now ingested the psilocybin. Here you go again, hit my line again What you want this time? Said you happy with your man What exactly is your plan? Say you wanna be friends That's a lot to expect Try to offer respect I've been keeping my distance You've been texting my sisters You'll be texting I'm sitting in my office one day And I'm thinking Maybe psychedelics can help me unlock that next level <laughs> Young Todd I was always scared of like, I don't know, having a bad trip or going permanently insane or psychotic afterwards. So I was like, you know, scared of trying. But then I started to watch documentaries and read and research. Then I learned of all the benefits, you know, people have breakthroughs, people have incredible insights. People have amazing ideas. It can help with depression and anxiety. Then it hit me. I got it. A psychedelic retreat. Young Toy. If I can have a guided trip with people who've been there and done that and who make sure I'm safe and that I'm not on some laced drugs, Found more than an ounce of a drug that field tested positive three times for fentanyl. Then I'll do it. Then I was like, as in, fuck it. I'm gonna do it. What if I stretch you out and never stress you out? Pull up to your house and ask your uncles the amount. Sit up on that couch. Hundreds and hundreds of people have come through my home and worked with mushrooms and, and nobody's been hurt there's there's nothing to fear it's very very five grams you can actually drop to two or three grams and have the strongest experiences you've ever had feel the fear and do it anyway uh, where you are growing all the time with the exception that we had experience with each head um We've been repeated experiences working with, with Soma and Sacred Mushrooms in, in this way. Um, and in, as such, we can share from our experience. And some of those experiences go back over many years. Um, and that's how we learn. We learn from each other. So I had a Zoom call with some of the guides from my, that are going to be assisting me in this psilocybin journey that I'm gonna take. And uh, we discussed a lot of things, like what to expect, how to approach it, when not to do it, because I think that's also an important thing, is like this is not recreational for them. It's quite a serious thing. It's for people who want growth, um, spiritual, personal growth. And I think I, I fall into that category because this is not just something that I just wanna do for fun. But, the most important thing that came out of that was the choice of set and setting. Set and setting determine the type of trip you have, meaning where you are, who you with, the emotional and mental state you're in, all of those things will dictate the kind of journey you end up having. And they said, look, you have two options. You can either come down to Somerset West, where we are at our farm, and journey with us in person there, or you could do it in the comfort of your own home. We'll still be there virtually watching over you and we'll have like a guided program for the people that are gonna be with you at the time. In my case, it's my wife. She's gonna be like my watcher for the day. And uh, initially I was like, I don't know. I don't wanna do it alone in my house. I wanna be where you guys are. I wanna be with the, you know, the, the watchers and the guiders and you know, the experts of this. But the more we spoke about it and the more they explained the pros and cons, the more I started thinking about like, I'm not sure if I wanna be in an unknown place that I'm going to for the first time with people I hardly know and to be in that vulnerable state with like other strangers, you know? So I made the decision, I'm gonna do it right here 
in my house, in the comfort of my own home, to be specific in my home office, because that's where I spend most of my time and it's kind of the space where I feel the most relaxed. So that's what I decided, I'm gonna do it here. There's a whole program leading up to the day of my journey, which as I'm recording this is tomorrow. There's a whole like guided process of what to eat, how to fast before doing it, how to set your intentions, how to actually set up the room, what to wear, like it's all set out. It's all very hands-on. It's like a proper, it's a proper journeying process that I'm going on. I'm gonna spend the day just getting my spirit, my mind in the right place. So like I mentioned, my choice of venue is going to be my home office. And usually this is how my home office looks like on a regular day. For purposes of the journey tomorrow, this is how it looks. And um, over here will basically be um, where I'm going to sit and actually have my journey. Um, I've just taken one of the dining room chairs and uh, one of the ottomans from the living room and I've just put a pillow on it so I can recline. This is my usually my meditation station um, and I'm gonna have these candles on tomorrow as well for the ambiance. And uh, the reason I chose this spot is because I can look out into the night sky from this position from that big window over there. So yeah, this is going to be my, my journey station. This is how I've set it up. I want to show you guys how it looks with the candles on. It looks like when my, the candles in my meditation corner are all lit. So that's kind of how it looks. And yeah, this is the room I've prepped for my journey. Yo, I'm so giddy right now. You won't believe what I have in my hands. I'll show you when I get upstairs. So, I'd actually asked for my mushrooms to be um, crushed and ground into a powder so that I can drink it, you know? A lot of people say they don't taste that good. <laughs> So I was like, I don't want to go through that nausea and agonizing stuff. I just want mine crushed and ground. And this is what it looks like. Hold on, let me show you. Tonight is the night. Um, I've basically spent the day preparing my mind. Okay, and this is my last meal before the journey, which is actually, this meal is not that different from what I would ordinarily eat, because I am vegetarian. And some steamed broccoli and cauliflower and some Moroccan vegetables and uh, you know, I always put some garlic and chili. I really love that and a little bit of feta and just some sliced apple So I'm gonna keep it simple. Just got out the shower. I've put on some really comfortable clothes and um, I'm gonna have one more zoom meeting with the journeyers um, Just for some last-minute prep one more zoom settle into my space and the journey begins You guys have been so supportive and so helpful with the prep that 
that we feel calm going into it. Um, but um, yeah, my wife is here with me. Yeah. She's been very actively participating. So thank you guys, all the watchers, and um, in helping us prep for the week, and also everyone going on the journey as well, just for being so you know, vulnerable, opening up, and making me feel like I'm not as weird as I thought I was. But we're already becoming family in, in, a, in, a, in a way that us watchers understand and a way that you'll understand tomorrow as well. Um, as we share a connection at a, at a level um, that we are shown in whatever way presents itself. So I'm, I'm really grateful for, for each of you being here. It really is a pleasure. It really is a, a privilege for us to have the opportunity to, to share this experience with you. I wanted to show you guys how I'm actually going to prepare taking the actual psilocybin beverage, okay? I'm going to just basically squeeze some lemon into the glass, pour some cranberry juice, and then mix in the psilocybin sacrament, which is right here, which, like I said, has been crushed and ground to make it uh, a drink that I'm just going to drink. I'm just going to mix that all in the glass. The chocolate is to take after taking the drink to kind of stabilize the stomach so I don't get too nauseous. Um, so yeah, this is, what the, this is what the concoction is going to look like. Okay. Damn, that's a lot. That looks like a lot. Let's give it a minute or two to settle. Okay, here goes. Ooh. That looks nasty. <laughs> it tastes nasty. Imagine if you had to chew it, no wonder they crush it so we drink it. Chewing into this microphone. I'm gonna put on some warm socks and then settle in. Yeah. Why? Okay. I don't know. I'm just like. I, I don't think know. you should make sure you see it. to settle in to my journeying spot, so. What was I doing? So, Laughing, coughing, crying. Oh yeah, I was trying to explain to you. It's like one minute I'm like, I need to blow my nose. The next minute I'm like, explain it, but it's basically like, yo. Yeah. 
Whew. But that's what I needed to go like. So a lot of. literally the morning after my journey um, my eyes are still quite puffy from all the crying and shit um, it was intense it was intense so we just at the botanical gardens and um, yo, everything looks so HD everything is so bright stark you know, um, my senses are definitely still heightened. And um, yeah, I mean, I'll do a full breakdown of how everything was when I get back home. But all I'm gonna say is, I came face to face with my most raw feelings and emotions, which was quite hectic. But it was good, hectic in a beautiful way. So yeah, we'll break it down in more detail when I'm more settled. So, how was the experience? Yo, oh, that shit was crazy, dog, crazy. Um, I made some notes that I want to share with you, okay? So, first I'll tell you what I felt physically, right? And then I'll tell you the deeper sort of experience, okay? I sat down in my, in my journeying spot and I started to feel the sensation in my fingers and in my toes. And then it felt like I was floating when it started to kick in. Couldn't had no sense of gravity, I had no, I lost my ability to see the ground from the ceiling, from the walls. Then, I got this euphoria, like coming down a roller coaster. It just kicked in, it hit me for like five straight minutes, this euphoria, when that was done. The deeper work of the psilocybin started to take shape. This is why the recommended dosage was five grams, so that you have a full, proper experience. So let me tell you what happened, okay? See, I walked into this thinking I could determine what I get out of the experience, but that's not how psilocybin works. Psilocybin kind of brings out the most pressing issues in your subconscious. Right? So let's say, for example, I thought what I wanted to get out of it is new waves of creativity, new insight, you know, new ideas. But actually, the thing that, that is most pressing in my subconscious at the time is something different. And that's what it'll bring out. Okay? It brings you face to face with your innermost soul. It brings you face to face with the, the issues that are really troubling you the thought patterns that are constantly on your mind. And some of them are good, some of them are bad. For me, it just peeled back the layers. It just peeled back the layers. I had, had no idea how much suppressed emotion that I had. Um, and that was the difficult part of my journey, was 
dealing with that, making eye contact with those feelings. There's a number of things that I kind of just dismissed or ignored or didn't properly deal with that just came to the surface. Um, like for example, I was homeless at one point and uh, I had a, a catastrophic business failure that had severe financial consequences and the resultant humiliation and frustration and feelings of insignificance, self-doubt that all came to the surface and they just hit me. That's when I really started to get quite emotional, actually. I cried a lot, I cried a lot, releasing that emotion. And you know what's crazy? I used to have this, this pain in my, uh, like in my diaphragm. And I came out of the experience and the pain is no longer there. It's almost like I released the emotion and it physically took away attention that was in my body. So that was both difficult and amazing. Some of the thoughts I had were, you know, memories of childhood, memories of childhood that brought me a lot of joy. Uh, and then memories of childhood that were also very, very sad, you know? And the big breakthrough that I got, the big, big, big breakthrough was basically my obsession with the things that have gone wrong. I came to this realization like, you know, I focus on so much on like what didn't go right and how I need to overcompensate to not make sure that happens again. And I just got reminded that there's a lot of things that I do that have positive outcomes and I should focus on the light instead of focusing on the darkness, if that makes sense. And that's really the big breakthrough that I had. My grandmother was an actress and I started to understand the roles she played on a deeper level. I understood that as like our unspoken language, the way she portrayed herself and on, you know, whether it was on a theater stage or in front of the camera. I have a whole briefcase full of her scripts that I took. She gave them to me and she wanted me to keep them shortly before she passed away. And I started to really understand her craft and understand her roles on film in a fundamentally different way. And I think that's enhanced my understanding of, of other people. I think it's made me more empathetic. Towards, after about four or five hours of these feelings and thoughts and uh, realizations, and I, I don't know how many times I said out loud, yo, bro, I was wilding for that. Why did I say that? Why did I do that? That was dumb. Though so condescending to this person or angry at that person or not patient enough with this person, a lot of it had to do with like, just relax. You don't need to be so intense all the time, you know? The last thing I wanted to share with you guys is this. My wife was with me, she was my, like my watcher. I just got so overwhelmed with how much I love this person. I started to remember why I love her. I started to, I even explained it to her, you know, why I got attracted to her to begin with and the qualities that make her amazing. It's really taught me to see the beautiful qualities of people. Um, and I think that stuck with me. So in short, my journey was difficult in some ways. There were things that I worked through that were not easy, but in the end, it was beautiful. So much pleasurable moments in the journey. And then there were also difficult moments in the journey. And after about four or five hours, which is the most intense you know, period in the journey. Your senses get so heightened. Uh, I had a bowl of soup afterwards, which is what they recommend you have. And it just tasted so amazing. The music, I was listening to music while I was going through it. It was, it's amazing. It's like the, you are in the middle of the instruments playing all around you. This joint right here. This joint right here. And your vision is so, like I was looking at the stars and I've never seen the stars like that, you know? I could see them glistening. I could see the different textures of, you know, not all stars are the same. Some are brighter. I could see the ones that were waning. I could see, 
how they were all interposed together in the sky. It was crazy. Even right now, as I speak to you, like the way I'm seeing things is, it feels like there was a fog of blurriness on my brain and over my eyes that has just been lifted. So all in all, beautiful. Uh, not what I expected. I did expect it to be a profound experience, but I didn't expect it to be what it was. And in the end, I think I come out of that experience a better person. Do I recommend this to other people? Look, if you have underlying conditions um, like severe anxiety or you're on antidepressants um, or you, have, you are genetically predisposed to things like psychosis, I don't know, maybe you need to speak to um, people who know what they're doing. But for most people, absolutely, I would say this is something you need to do at least once in your life because it unlocks insights that are difficult to tap into on your own. So this beautiful herb, this beautiful plant that comes from the earth is a gift. Um, and now I understand why the people who were helping me on this journey, the guys at Somaland, who I'll, I'll link below, they are fantastic. That whole team is amazing. Um, they've been through this a number of times. And now I understand why they encourage you to look at it as a deeper journey, as opposed to some recreational thing that you just do to have fun. They see it as, as something that ought to be treated as sacred, something that ought to be treated with deference and reverence. And now I understand why. And I think without their guidance, I may have taken this sacred mushroom the wrong way. So I'm eternally grateful to them. And I would encourage anyone who wants to try this to do it in very much the same way. So yes, highly recommended for me. What an amazing experience. If you've made it to this part of the video, thanks for watching this whole process. And uh, maybe I've inspired you to take the leap, hopefully. Cheers. I can make you mine for a lifetime. I can keep you warm, be a sunshine. Don't worry about my past, look, we'll be fine. I can make you mine for a lifetime, a lifetime of sunshine. I could have wrote a note for you, silly me. I write soliloquies in hopes to seal the deal.